All right, guys, so in Rockford, uh, Illinois today, on the way back to Chicago to fly back to Copenhagen and stuff, and we're at Prairie Brewing Company, who are in the old Rockford Brewing Company building. It's a massive big thing. I'm just trying to move the camera so you can see it, but look at the size of that really old brewery. Apparently dates back from like 1849 or something. So yeah, it looks pretty cool actually. So we'll go and take a little look and see how we get on. They've got beer flights, so you'll see me taste one of those in a little bit. Cheers. So yeah, yeah, just other thing that's really cool about this brewery is right next to it, they've got this nice little waterfront bit. So there you can see brewery building just up here. And if you walk along down here, you've got the dockside tap room, which is pretty cool. Actually, I'm sure this isn't the best day for it, obviously, but you know, um, you can see, welcome to Prairie Brewing Company. But yeah, I'm sure on a nice kind of summer's day, this would be really nice. Even today, I mean, for Scottish people, this is nice weather. I mean, come on. Looks pretty cool, actually. Hopefully I can come back here sometime when it's a little bit uh, warmer and nicer, actually. But yeah, there you go. So we're going to go in up here and take a little look at the tap room and stuff. So yeah, like inside you can see massive big windows and stuff like that. If you go down here, just down this direction, that's their dockyard kind of tap room or boatyard tap room, whatever they're calling it. If you wander down here, you can see there's just a little bit over here that, a uh, little bit over here that tells you a little bit about the brewery and things like that. Jonathan Peacock, who started uh, Rockford Brewery on Prairie Street. And then they've, it's just a massive place, this. If you walk kind of down here and just over here to the left, they've got this massive big event space, which is kind of cool and apparently the barrel room is over here so I think you can rent all of this out not sure if I'm meant to be here but you know if uh, you want to get married or whatever you can obviously rent out this space and go a bit mental at a brewery so thumbs high so yeah this is the bit we're always interested in when we come to visit a brewery you can see they've got a few cans and things like this, American IPA, Grisettes, uh, the Angry Turk Imperial Stout, it's supposed to be kind of interesting and I'm quite curious to try that, Turkish Imperial Coffee Stout, they've also got a Peach Weizen, I've got a feeling I might go for the IPA and the Imperial Stout actually, those look quite nice. There you can see, here's the merchandise and stuff like this, seems to be a big thing in American breweries, they've always got a great variety of uh, you know, brewery merchandise and stuff like this. At home, in Sweden and in Scotland, it always just tends to be t-shirts and stuff, but there you can get a little look into the brewery and stuff, but the light's being a bit of a bastard at the moment, and you can't look into it too much, but there you can see some of the different beer labels and stuff. You can see all the fermentation tanks over the back there, copper boiling kettle. Looks pretty nice, and there's a nice big fingerprint on the window. But yeah, and if you just go round the corner, You've got the tap room here. There's my family sitting over there. But yeah, today they've got a little, quite a different selection on there. So they've got lagers, uh, blonde beers, Weizens, a couple of different IPAs and stuff like that. The Angry Turk Stout. And I'm going for the Imperial Quaker Shaker as well, which looks nice. So I've got myself a flight and I'll do a little tasting for you just in a minute. All right, yeah, so I've got myself a beer flight here. So I've got an American Blonde. Um, I've got a New England IPA. This one was the uh, Amber Ale, I'm sure. This guy, I think, was the Prairie Street IPA, uh, the American Brown, and also the um, the Quaker Shaker, if I'm naming it properly, which was an Imperial Stout. So we're gonna have a taste of these bad boys. Right, so first up, we'll have a little go at the American Blonde then and see how we go. And the guy in the bar told me this is quite um, unusual, so I'm just curious to see how it turns out. These little glasses are actually very similar to the ones that you'll see me review sake out of when I'm in Japan, so uh, yeah, curious, but let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, let's go. That didn't sound healthy. Um, yeah, so this one, you know, quite sort of nice, smooth, pale malty bready base to this one. It comes off the tap really nice. I mean, the, the guy in the bar told me it was a little bit more 
uh, leaning towards the Belgian side of things. And in some ways I can see that, but it's not quite as sort of bready and yeasty as you'd normally expect from a, a Belgian beer, but ah, it's, it's pretty nice actually. But yeah, um, it's quite, I mean, it's, it's quite straight up this. It does lean a little bit more towards the Belgian blonde. Um, it's kind of, I can see the American influence in there as well, just because it's not quite as thick and things like that. Because Americans, I think, just because of the heat and stuff, tend to like their beers a little bit lighter. I've noticed that when I've come over here, the mouthfeel of the American beers on tap, at least, is just that little bit wetter because they want that refreshing element. But yeah, nice sort of bready base to it. There's maybe a little bit of a kind of biscuity note in the middle of the palate the more and more that you drink of it. But you've got a nice sort of grassy freshness to this one. And um, there's a little bit of fruitiness there, you know, a sort of, um, should we say, yeah, it's almost got like a little bit of a kind of apricot-y, grassy kind of thing at the front part of the palate, and it's it's nice actually. That's a really nice session beer, so the American Blonde, I think it was 4.5 or 5%, somewhere in that kind of region, that's a really nice sessionable beer, that one, so if that's kind of what you're after, then, you know, by all means, have a go at that. Let's take a look at the New England IPA then. I forget the name of this one, but we'll check that and I'll put it in the text. So yeah, but yeah, let's have a taste of this one. Let's go. Yeah, that was quite nice. I mean, to me, compared to some of the other New England IPAs I've had, this one, it has a little bit of a almost wheaty spice to it. I can feel that with the New England IPAs, I mean, straight away, you're always going to get that wheaty, sort of, um, doughy, yeasty kind of thing. Well, not, well, not really yeasty, you do get a little touch of the yeast out of this, but you do get that nice, smooth, wheaty quality, blanket in the middle of your tongue. To me, the wheat in this one is a little bit more, almost spicy, a little bit more punchy. You can feel the oatiness coming out the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer. And, um, you know, it just, more and more of it comes out, actually, which is, um, which is nice. It's, this, the malt base in this one really does sweeten up a little bit as you go further into the flavour, but it does have a little bit of a spicy kick kind of in the beginning, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a biscuity note, I think, as well. Maybe that's kind of res uh, residue from the, the blonde beer, right enough. But yeah, I mean, it's malt base in this I in the New England IPA is solid enough, actually. Which is nice. Um, on the hoppy side of things, a little touch of earthiness in the back corner of the palate as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue. A little bit more floral, lighter and grassy as well. And then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that oily bubble with the fruity esters. And for me, the fruit on this one, um, yeah, it's quite fresh this. You're still getting a good little bit of a green quality from the hops in this one. For me, there's a good bit of a, a grapefruity, passion fruity side of things. I wouldn't be too surprised if it's a galaxy that's in that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of this darker kind of passion fruity, grapefruity sort of thing in this one. It's a very kind of straight up, almost, it's not even right to say this about New England IPs these days, because it's still a very new style, at least to Europeans like myself. It's definitely got a little bit of that kind of darker, um, tropical fruit quality to it, which is interesting. But yeah, again, a really nice, solid New England IPA. Um, so yeah, for this one, one of these, I'm not sure exactly which one, one of them is going to be the um, the Amber Ale, and one of them is going to be the IPA. So we'll see how we get on. We'll just taste this one and see which it is. That's the Amber Ale. With this one, straight away, you can definitely get the... Um, you can really get this kind of almost English ale quality to it. It's got that kind of bready, spicy sort of thing to it. And I have to admit, I was never a great fan of the um, traditional English ales, if you like. Apart from, I like the darker ones, the porters and the stouts. Some of the milds could be very nice as well, but I was never a great fan of the English style bitters. So, I mean, this one for me um, is a bit more of an English style amber, this beer. I was hoping for a nice American amber. And you can smell out of this one as well that it's a little bit more kind of grainy and things like that. It definitely smells a bit more like a kind of brown, wholemealy bread type quality in this beer. 
it's almost actually it reminds me if you just if you chew malt grains to be honest with you it really reminds me of that definitely has that more English malty quality although I'd be guessing that they use mainly um, English malt and uh, they use mainly American malts in this one rather just because of the availability but yeah um, this beer brown bready quality across the middle of the tongue maybe a little bit of a biscuity kind of syrupy sweetness in the middle of the palate and um, hoppy side of things quite earthy I'm finding back corners of the palate really a good little bit of um, of earthy presence there and it becomes a bit more floral and grassy you know around the front curve of the palate and as you move further forward on the fruity side of things you know just a sort of typical floral grassy kind of note to it as well but yeah interesting that um, yeah not too much in the way of fruitiness, definitely more of a kind of malty, amber ale that one. But um, yeah, interesting to try different stuff. Let's have a go at this one then. I'm guessing this one is the Prairie Street IPA, so hopefully this is a nice West Coast IPA. I've been missing my big IBUs and my caramel malt bases and stuff. Slanger. Oh yeah. That's quite nice. So yeah, it has a nice little bit of a malty presence to it. Um, definitely getting a nice bit of a kind of pale malty base to the beer. You can feel that going right across the middle of your palate. On top of that, you start to get some of the nice, more biscuity sweet qualities out there. There's the UPS fan arriving because it's America, you know. Um, but yeah, nice big sort of malty, caramelly sweetness coming out of this one. Um, I like that base. Good little bit of hoppy bitterness. It does have a nice kind of resinous, bitter quality to it this beer. I'm guessing maybe around you know sort of 60, 70 IBUs, maybe a little bit higher than that. And then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you're getting the fruity notes out of this one. For me, it's quite a classic old school sort of IPA this one. A little bit grapefruity, maybe a wee bit of orange or something in there, but it's nice this. I do like that. Yeah. It's nice. The way it, this one's really well balanced actually and you know, the New England IPAs are great, but I, you know, my first beer, you know, if you go back to the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and Torpedoes and stuff like that, you really grow to love this kind of beer style, and I, I really like how this one kind of goes together, to be honest with you. Um, this is just a really solid um, IPA, actually. Mm. So yeah, definitely have a go at that one. If you're a fan of the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and stuff, I think you will quite enjoy that one. So this one will be the American Brown Ale. So yeah, nice kind of mahogany colour on that actually. This is a style that I always used to love, you know, starting with Brooklyn Brown. Um, and you don't see too many of them in Europe actually. I got one re recently from Remeluth Gorge Brewery, just uh, in Eslev near Lund where I live. Um, but this one, the American Brown is a style that I always enjoyed from Brooklyn Brown. And it's, it's nice to come over here and try some of them in the breweries. So yeah, let's try this one too. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. So yeah, um, across the middle of your palate then, brown bready notes once again. It does have this toasty brown malt quality. It's not quite as strong as black malt to be honest with you, but it does have this nice toasty thing. It's almost like a really roasted, um, well-fired bread crust, like German bread, the really dark brown German bread. I think the Americans call it pumpernickel, but I've never seen it called that when I've been in Germany, but it really just a well-fired bread crust across the middle of your palate. In fairness, it sweetens out a little bit the further that you go into the beer. But a really nice, kind of quite dark malt base to this one initially, and then it sweetens out really nicely. But yeah, um, really quite nice um, base to this one, I have to say. I like, this is one of these beers where it's all about how the the flavour develops and things like that, and I really like just how it goes together. And yeah, some arsehole is just parked next to me and left his car ride, and thank you very much. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, hoppy side of things then, you've definitely got a nice kind of, um, you've got a really nice um, kind of earthiness to this beer. It smooths out a lot as you come further forward. It's maybe even a little bit herbal, but then round the very front curve of the palate, you've just got a nice lighter grassy note and to me the fruity side of this beer I wonder if there's a little bit of will you met in here because there is almost a little bit of a kind of blackberry note which is um, which is quite interesting but um, 
yeah, I do, I do suspect just from the way the hops are going together, the earthiness, the kind of grassy note, and also those kind of red fruit notes. I think there's a little bit of well you met here. It's a really nice hop that actually to add to beers that are a little bit darker in colour. But yeah, no, solid brown ale that. Let's move on to the big brother of everything then. So this one, if I remember the name correctly, is the Quaker Shaker, a nice big um, imperial stout. So yeah, this is the last one of all of them. So let's get stuck into this guy. Slanger, Skull. Yeah, that's nice that. Um, very, very smooth and I'm noticing that again when when you get the big American Imperial Stouts on tap, which is quite rare for us in Europe, we do have our own ones. But I'm finding, I'm finding that the American Imperial Stouts are a little bit more um, light in the mouthfeel. The, the Danish ones, I drink a lot of Danish Imperial Stouts, and they're big and uh, they're big, syrupy and oily. The American ones are very, very smooth in the mouthfeel, and they just feel a little bit lighter actually. Um, but yeah, this one, um, really nice, smooth, almost bready base to it. A little bit of a roasty black malt quality. And you've also got some of these nice, um, you've also got like a really nice kind of um, caramelly note to this one. It's quite a well toasted brown sugar, I have to say. So um, yeah, I like how that goes together. There's almost like a little touch of like a kind of fruity fudge or licorice or something like that in this one. It's definitely got a nice brown sugary note. You've got some woody qualities in there as well, which are really nice. And also, um, you know, you've also got a little touch of nuttiness towards the front of the palate too. On the fruity side of things, a little bit of red fruity note, again, to me, it leans towards the kind of almost figgy flavours and sort of candied strawberries and stuff, the further that you go into the flavour. But um, yeah, another really quite solid beer, this one. I like this. So yeah, if I had to pick my favourite out of these six then, I really like that. I enjoy a Belgian blonde, you know, Lefe for me, I don't drink beers all that often anymore, but, you know, Lefe I've always enjoyed a nice Belgian blonde session ale, and you know, to me, that's a really, really nice, quite sessionable beer this. The brown ale is nice because we don't get all that many of them. You know, it's not a style that you find too often in Europe. I do quite like that about this one. And the stout, I'd say, is good. The New England IPA, I did like that. Um, the American ones I'm finding, when it comes to the New England IPAs, they're not quite as creamy as the ones that we get in Europe. It seems that Europe, um, you know, the regardless of whether it's Germany or the Netherlands or Sweden or wherever, we always, our ones do seem to be a little bit creamier than the American ones, actually. But that said, I had a very creamy beer from Aslan in, uh, in Virginia recently. But yeah, probably blonde, brown ale is a bit nostalgic for me, and the Imperial Stout, probably my three favourite ones. New England IPA is very good. These two, um, they're, they're all right, but you know, not as good quality as the other four, I think. But yeah, a really nice little flight, this one, and a good variety of things available in the tap room. So you know, come and check it out if you get the chance. I'll give you my final thoughts on the brewery after we've had a little taste of some of the food and things like that. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Cheers. Alright guys, so just a little sign off from uh, Prairie Brewing Company in Rockford, Illinois. You know, really nice uh, dark beers I think, particularly the Quaker Shaker Stout was really nice, their Belgian Blonde was good, New England IPA, uh, the Brown Ale that you saw me review, the other ones were, you know, kind of okay. But a really nice location I have to say, you can see behind me we can look out over the, the river there, which is uh, which is really, really nice. But yeah, a really quite nice um, setup that they've got here, even if you look behind me here. I'm just stood up on a little platform just now, you know, it's really nice kind of old um, industrial style building this. So yeah, you know, come and check it out, their food menu seems pretty good, I was quite impressed with that. Uh, and it's obviously cool to stop in another random place and try another different brewery. So really quite enjoyed this and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this little series of uh, brewery visit videos. So we'll see if we can get more of these filmed over the next couple of days. Slanja, school.